Hey everybody, it's me, Marina Martinez-Bateman. I'm the CEO of New Coyote Consulting. We are an equity and communications consulting firm here in the Pacific Northwest. Look how easy that comes back. I'm, I don't know, theater kid for life. I was in a training today and um, it was a facilitation training and uh, both of the facilitators were theater kids and we were making a bunch of jokes. Well, not, 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 me, not us, I was. I was in the training, I was doing nothing, but they were making a bunch of jokes and I was feeling a part of it. Um, I wanna talk about motivation. Not motivation, because I feel like that's like such a garbage concept. Like, I don't think, wait, <laughs> there's this old proverb, it's a Jewish proverb. It's like, where is it written that you should be happy all the time? Where is it written that you should be motivated all the time? That's just such trash, the idea that like, <sighs> people who get things done are these like driven, ultra people and it's like I don't believe it maybe I'm just never met someone who's a real doer but I just don't think so I feel like all of us um, face a myriad of barriers to the goals that we have and the principles that we want to live by and the truths and realities that we inhabit and we can do our best to, to break through those and dismantle them and avoid them and get over them. And, um, and then also there's a whole world out here, you know, there's a whole system of culture and economics and history and politics. That's, we are not more powerful than that thing. And it's kind of garbage that in the United States of America, we are taught that we are, or that we could be. I think that's like really a delusional, just <laughs> kind of like vampire, like a uh, psychic vampire of a, of a cultural relevant, like element that we teach our kids that they're so special and that they can do anything. No details, no nuance, no gray areas on that. And then is it any wonder that we grow up thinking that if we don't, if we're not the person who solves white supremacy, my vacuum is telling me it has a low battery. <laughs> uh, I guess somebody knocked it off the little station, probably me. Um, but anyway, we tell our kids that if they don't grow up to be Martin Luther King and Cesar Chavez and Rosa Parks and all these people that we only portray in the in the shiniest of lights that we never tell almost ever rarely tell their whole life story and the nuances of their existence and their practices but we put people on pedestals and we tell our kids that if they're not that special if they don't do that then they're automatically a failure and then we wonder why we have trouble dismantling these systems because because we're not taught to be workers we're not taught to be laborers together that's a super brain that was like a fucking tangent i want to talk about motivation and i want to talk also about intentional living i've been thinking a lot lately about movement and my movement practice most of you know i do yoga in the mornings um and that i used to do swimming um and that i haven't been able to swim basically since the pandemic. There have been little little times when I feel safe enough, but it just hasn't been lately. And, um, and I've recently just been really tired, really tired of letting this pandemic control my access to moving my body joyfully. So I've been trying to sort of like feel out what I'm gonna do next. And I'm also like going through lots of memories of movement uh, you know, movement practices that were bad for me or that I used to hurt myself or that I took to the fucking bad degree. <laughs> um, because that's who I am. Um, I'm a self-harmer from way back and I've used every weird fucking feature and workplace and hobby and idea and concept and everything. If I can use it to hurt myself, I have, I have. And so then I'm looking at all of this times, so, you know, I'm like really thinking about this time. I used to do barefoot running on the beach in Los Angeles at dawn. It was beautiful. It was tedious. I hated it. I never got better at it. And I quit. 
after what felt like a really long time. So I don't know how long that was. It could have been six months, could have been a year, whatever. It was a long, it was a pretty extended period of time though. Because I remember, I definitely remember like the seasons changing. At least once. Hated it the whole time. Made myself do it. And now I'm trying to engage in joyful movement with my body. And all I can think of is the time that I forced myself to run barefoot on the beach at, every morning at dawn. I'm not a morning person. I don't wake up until 1030 these days. I can't. I don't function before then. Why would I be fucking awake if I don't have to be? <laughs> and I did that. I used to drive half an hour in LA traffic to the beach. Run for an hour. Run. It's a walk run. So you're doing these little tiny steps. Or it's a barefoot run. Tiny steps. Um, it's all, it's way more about form than speed. Um, but also I never got any faster and that bothered me because it was kind of about speed for me, even though I said it wasn't and whatever. I did feel physically better during that period of time, but I was also kind of like torturing myself, doing a bunch of stuff I didn't like. And now I'm trying to re-engage with movement in a joyful way. And I like the other night I was like, oh, I'm going to put some music on and dance. And, um, and I was done. I, there was a point where I was done and I kept going because there was a voice in my head that was like, this isn't a significant amount of dancing. You have to, you have to do it for longer. <laughs> and then I was, I didn't like it. Then I didn't like it. And I was over here dancing like, ooh, mm, mm, I don't like it. <sighs> I want to know, I, I want to know and I want to discover what the what what so here I had this this extreme with intentional living where I was using it to fucking hurt myself if I had a goal I was going to accomplish that goal or I was going to die trying because inside of me I'm worthless garbage and the only thing that gives me value are the goals I set for myself and whether or not I achieve them and to what degree I achieve them or more than them and I've had this like long period of recovery from that kind of thinking and that kind of working. And now here I am wanting to lean back into intentionality. I've had this like really super organic growth. New Coyote has done super organic growth, you know, which is wonderful and beautiful and also really hard to maintain a purely organic growth in a very artificial capitalist system during a pandemic, <laughs> during political upheaval, during, you know, unprecedented uh, everything, right? <laughs> I want intentional growth again, but I don't want it to look like it did before. And I am having a hard time when I ask myself what, it, what that looks like then, what that new version of intentional growth looks like, I'm having a hard time figuring out what it is. So I'm sitting in contemplation this week. I'm asking myself what it feels like to be intentional, intentional about goals in a world where I love myself and I'm an asset and my, and, and my true goal is not just money. It's not just clients. It's not just like... The number on the page doesn't mean anything to me anymore. Now that I've done this growth cycle, it wouldn't matter if I got $50,000 tomorrow. What would matter is how I got that, how I'm going to use it. It's all about the process now. And it's, I don't, I'm having a hard time putting intentionality in a process that isn't fully responsive slash reactive to the organic natural world that it is inhabiting. More to come. Those are my thoughts. Have lunch, have a weekend, have a walk, have a dance, stop dancing when you feel like stopping to dance. Take care of yourself. See you next week.